June 27th. It was a sunny afternoon. Everyone bought out to their skull. They even started watching Love Island. And then all of a sudden, FPL 2019 20 is live. 6.5 million kings. I decided to watch a few FPL tubers. Yeah. Official fantasy football. And I thought, hey, I like fantasy. I like making YouTube videos. So I gave birth <laughs> to a new channel. And on the 30th of June, I released my first video. Hey, what's up, guys? Nathan Bacon here. Who? You may not have heard of me because I have a whole zero subscriber. Please get me to one subscriber, please. And even for a brand new channel, this video had pretty good views and support. Shout out to this guy. So I decided to try and keep it up and make two videos a week. A fortnight later, no, I don't mean fortnight. I made a video smashing other FPL tubers first drafts, which is apparently cringe. Like if you cry every time and also shouting out their channels so we can all support each other and subscribe to Let's Talk FPL. To my surprise, and no, I don't mean a surprise when you think it's just a fart and it turns out to be just a little bit more a little surprise I mean it was a big surprise I definitely did not think this would happen but the video now has over 20,000 views and 400 likes and a lot of amazing and really nice comments this has motivated me more than I ever have been and I've been trying to give back the support to you that I've been so thankful for by spending hours and hours on videos even after my 9 to 5 summer job. I've tried to make different style content by trying not to be too serious and overload with boring stats and just have a giggle and a goof, but still also being smart about my decisions. And by a little goof, I don't mean triple captain Lukaku. So I wanted to take this moment to say thank you to everyone liking, commenting and even joining my league. I was not expecting any of this, so thank you so much and here's to a great year in FPL. Enough about me, as much as I love attention, I'm also here to go through the pre-season of FPL and all the Premier League's teams too. So I'm going to give a quick summary based on pre-season. You shouldn't focus on pre-season results too much, but it gives a good idea on who could be nailed on to play, so I will talk about that and suggest some good FPL options. I apologise if any of this information is wrong, you can blame my very trusty source of Google, but I will try and get it right for you. We start with Arsenal. Their transfers include the ins of Nicolas Pepe and Danny Caballero on loan. I honestly think Pepe will do great, at least by the end of the season, if not straight away, if he can adjust to the Premier League soon, but we will have to see. They've also lost a big player in Ramsey, which I honestly think is one of the biggest concerns for them. Caballero is good, but not as complete as a midfielder than Ramsey was. Also just losing their club captain Gashelny, so defence could be even shakier. Their preseason went pretty well, playing either 4-2-3-1 or 5-3-2, so I would expect Leno to start in goals. Defence has options, but do you think the new defensive additions would start? Midfielders slight rotation with Xhaka, Guendouzi and Torreira, as well as more attacking midfielder in Caballero, Ozil and Mkhitaryan. But the main attack will probably be Lacazette up top with Aubameyang and Pepe as wide forwards, or rotating in the front three. Unless the defence gets better, I would avoid them. Midfield could be decent for the price if certain players stand out, and Aubameyang and Pepe would be very good options if that front line can glue and do well. Aston Villa, or Fulham Vision 2. They've made a lot of transfers, including Wesley and Mings, but they've also gone for some Premier League experience too in Target and Heaton. They've spent well over 100 million and haven't sold anyone, so they're proper going for it. I personally think they won't do a Fulham and have a good chance of staying up. As they have brought in so many players, they do have a bit of depth and they don't know who will work well together, so not easy to predict the lineup. But I would expect at least Heaton, Target, Mings, Grealish, and Wesley to definitely be nailed on and pretty good options as well, as they're really cheap in FBL. Next, we have Bournemouth. They have not signed any big players yet, but they have strengthened by bringing in some good young potential and not losing any first team players. Their preseason was good with a lot of players getting minutes, also making their team a little unpredictable, especially at the back. But the biggest concern for them is Brooks picking up an injury and being out for a few months, who started to influence the attack in a few goals, but actually they did just sign Wilson on loan, so that could be a very good alternative. So their goalkeeper is still up in the air. I think they might want to give their young goalkeeper a run, but we will have to see. Defense is unsure of. Ake and maybe Cook are very likely to start, but I'm unsure. Then their mid and attackers do have some options and they do rotate formations a lot. Now with Brooks out, I would defo say Wilson and Fraser will be nailed and probably King. And they're all very good options with Bournemouth playing two promoted teams in their first two games. Then we have Brighton. They do have a new attacking manager in Graham Why Did You Leave Us Potter. But they also have made a few great attacking additions in Trossad, Morpé and Webster to strengthen all areas as well as only outgoing players being loaned so far, unless Leicester want their Maguire replacement. Their preseason was pretty good, getting a good few wins and scoring a decent amount. They were one of the favourites to get relegated, but now it really is unclear how well they would do, but I think they will be a completely different team than we've seen before. Their goalkeeper pair is the most chosen pair and won't be too bad. They may concede a few more with a higher line, so I'm sure if their defenders would be worth it. But I do feel like the attacking players of Gross, Trossard and Mopé could be very good options for their price, 
but I'm gonna have to wait to see. Next is Burnley. They've only had one major incoming in Jay Rodriguez and one out in Heaton. This isn't too bad as they do have three senior keepers and Pope is probably better and Burnley aren't really known for their crazy amount of goals so Jay Rodriguez is a nice addition. But they have actually been scoring a lot in preseason, so maybe they're going to be more pressing and more attacking but they probably will continue their boring style of play. But that doesn't matter for FBL. Their defenders could be rather good options if they can get back to their defensive bests and most of their forwards are very cheap so it could be very good options but I think I'm good for now. Then we got Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Even with the transfer ban they have made one signing in Kovacic because he was on loan but more importantly they have lost their best player in Hazard and also Morata. Not sure what one is worse but they can't even get direct replacements. They might be a couple players off but they do have a few selection of players in their youth so they do have a few options. Chelsea's preseason actually started shaky, even losing to a Japanese team, but they've been free-flowing since with the likes of Barkley, Mount, and even Pulisic doing very well. They all could be at risk of rotation, but if they were nailed, would be some of the best options for their prices. Their goalkeeper and most of the defense should be similar to last, but then their midfield and attacking could change a lot. I would say wait to see who starts performing well and if any player actually sticks their spot, but it is very difficult to tell right now. Then we have Crystal Palace. They've brought in, I'd say, a backup slash rotation forward at best in Jordan Ayew, as well as the experienced Gary Cahill. Now, the addition of Cahill will probably mean highly chosen Kelly might not have a chance to play, so keep a lookout for that. They've also sold their best defender in wan and could potentially lose their best and major part of the team in Zaha. If Zaha goes and they don't fully get a replacement, I feel like this team would really struggle in the table, and also their players in FPL. They performed rather poorly in preseason, but that's because they didn't have Zaha, as he was at AFCON, but that just goes to show how they are without him. Their defence and goalkeeper could almost all be up for contention, and the only player worth it in their team would be Zaha, if it stays how it is, Zaha at 7 million is actually a really good price as they do have a good run of fixtures at the start, but again, we will have to see. Next is Everton. They've got Andre Gomez in a permanent deal, but they did lose a very important part of their midfield in Idrissa Gay. This could be covered by Delph, but they are looking to bring in a like-for-like -like replacement, making Delph a squad rotation player. They've also signed the young and promising Moise Keane from Juventus as you'd assume as their first try striker. Everton's preseason was a bit on and off. They managed to keep a few clean sheets, which was unclear to see as they have lost Zuma and also some strength in depth. They've also failed to score in a few of their games, which could change when Keane starts playing, but I expect them to do quite well. And they do have some great FBL options in Luca Dean, Sigerson, and even Richarlison. Leicester. Leicester have made the deal with Telemans permanent and he played a great part for them in the second half of the season. So that's a great addition. They have also brought in Perez from Newcastle and I believe Rogers said to score more goals. But they have also lost a very important player in Maguire and I assume they will get their replacement before the window closes. Their preseason went well with almost all wins and scoring a few in each. I noticed though that they have been playing Vardy and Perez as a forward pair but Perez is down as a midfielder in FBL and at 6.5 million I think he's an amazing option. He was only that price because he was at Newcastle but now he's going to be in a much more attacking team playing as a forward all the time. I expect very good returns as long as he can keep out Ian Acho who actually did quite well in preseason. There's a lot of good FBL options in this Leicester team in every position so I will definitely be looking out to get a few of them. Liverpool. They have not made any big signings and I don't think they were planning on either so that's why they have just brought two promising youngsters. They also haven't lost anyone major with most of their out just coming to the end of their contracts. Their preseason was okay but was missing some important players because of AFCON and also Copper America but people's main concerns were them not keeping any clean sheets but Van Dijk didn't play all of 90 minutes of the game and he also didn't partner with Gomez until the Community Shield. I honestly don't think it's anything to worry about and I expect Liverpool to almost do just as good in terms of clean sheets but they still have that amazing attacking potential that would still make them worth it. Even though the first half was slow I think they have played really well in the Community Shield against Man City. Even with a few key players not playing the full game I must say Salah looked very exciting and he will definitely be my captain option at the start. Then we have reigning champions Man City. They have brought in even more after getting almost 100 points in two seasons in a row which is mad. They finally have another player to play the Fernandinho role and even the first choice there. With the only games Man City actually struggled last season was when Fernandinho was out so this could be very good. They've also got Angelino and maybe Cancelo to strengthen positions again to surely do pretty good. But they have lost company in Delft, two important players last year. Their preseason went very well, only losing on pens and scoring a lot of goals. Sterling was on very hot form and De Bruyne seemed to play very well. It does seem like Sterling could play up front with Aguero not fully back yet, but with Sané's little injury in the shield, it's not clear yet. De Bruyne also looked very tired and cramped up at the end, so maybe he's not ready to play 90 minutes, but 60 minute Kevin De Bruyne is better than 90 minute most players. 
does. Their defense is currently up in the air, as it's not clear if Mendy is actually out with Zinchenko and Angelino as the options. And if Cancelo comes in, will he play over Walker? Laporte also picked up a knock, so Edison might be the only 100% option. All the forwards will probably get minutes and will always be hit and miss each game week, but if you catch them on a good day, they will be some of the best options. Next up is Man United. As everyone knows, they have been rather busy in the transfer market. First buying Dan James, and after seeing him a few times last season, I can say he is pretty good, but not world class, but maybe what they need. They have also massively improved at the back with wan Basaka and Maguire. We could see the Man United defence do very well and get a lot of clean sheets, but they have got rid of Herrera and not replaced him, which could be a big problem. Their preseason was very successful, with a lot of their younger players also proving themselves, scoring a lot and not conceding many. With all of their defenders being at 5.5 million, they could score rather well for a good price, along with their forwards not being the most expensive. I do have a feeling a lot of players will be rotated and given their youth a chance, so you could potentially catch some of these really cheap options at good moments to get decent points. But I am personally going to avoid Man United from the start as I don't think any of their forwards are the best options for their prices, but we'll have to see how they perform. Newcastle have actually spent money? What? They have bought Joe Linton and Alan Sant Maximon, strengthening their midfield and attack, but also losing their three strikers in Perez, Joe Salou, and Rondon leaving after his loan. So a lot left for Joe Linton, but at least you know he will always play. They only played three preseason games and also lost one of their best managers in the league. It's not clear how they will do, and with them being one of the favourites to be relegated, I honestly don't think any Newcastle players are worth it in FPL apart from the very cheap budget options that could get some game time for your bench. Next up is Norwich. They spent just just less than a million and brought in two decent loans and a free and only lost players in loans out. Now Norwich were a very solid team last year so it will be very interesting to see how different they will be to Villa as they have brought so much in which didn't work for Fulham last year but maybe Norwich are just confident with the players they already have or just not aiming for anything and happily take the parachute pay months to stable their club. Their pre-season was good winning a few scoring a few and also conceding a few which was the story with them last year and I feel like will be similar to this time again. But due to them not bringing in many players, their team should be rather similar to last year, but it is very hard to see if any of them will be able to do anything in the Premier League. So if you want to take a punt, go for it, but it may be a big risk. Then we have Sheffield United. They have made some attacking reinforcements in stealing McBurney from us, but I will say, even though he's a complete striker, not sure if he can do it in the Premier League yet, but maybe in a two-striker system he can. They've also strengthened in other areas, getting Dean Henderson on loan again and Jaggy Alka on a free. They they also haven't lost anyone major, which tends to be the case with newly promoted teams anyway. Their preseason went quite well, scoring a decent amount. They had good defence last year, but we will have to see if they can keep that up. But what I will say is that wing backs basically play as midfielders and are listed as defenders in FPL, so could be pretty good options. I don't like going for any promoted team players to start because the risk reward won't be that high. Southampton. They have got some much needed attackers in Che Adams and De Gempo, who could give them that little extra to score enough to stay ahead. They have also only lost one player in Matt Target who played less than half of their games last season. Their preseason has been free-flowing, scoring a good amount of goals between all the forwards and not even conceding many. Southampton are one of those teams who go through spells of good form, so if you catch some of their forwards at a good time, they could be great value for money and more chance than a promoted team's forward to score. I'm going to wait to see how the new guys do and maybe look to use them as enablers if they're doing great. Next is Spurs. They have strengthened in a much-needed area by obtaining Ondombele. He is the Dembele replacement they've needed and I feel like he can influence the team very well by controlling the midfield and allowing the forwards to stay up the pitch and get some goals. They have also lost Trippier who has been majorly dipping out of form but they do have Aurea and Kyle Walker Peters for that spot but I think that position will look weak for a few weeks until some of them find their form. Their preseason was pretty good with them challenging themselves against all the best teams in Juventus and Real Madrid as well as other teams like Man United. Endembele looks like he already fits in the team and Kane, Lucas and Lamella getting a few goals each in preseason. With the loss of Trippier, the injuries of Foyth, the defence could be shaky to start so might be a risk if you go for them and even though they have some great players it's hard to say who will play or if they would even be rotated but the likes of Kane and probably Ericsson if he stays would be very likely to play most of the games and I feel like Kane is going to have a great season. Then we have Watford. They have made one major sign in the experience of Craig Dawson and they have also not lost anyone apart from loans and releases. Watford finished last season quite strong even getting to the FA Cup final ignoring they lost 6-0. Their preseason has been decent with actually Andre Gray being in hot form. This may mean he could start over one of Dini or Delafeo, so be careful for what one you do choose 
as it is unclear. But Watford do have a good run of fixtures to start, so any of their players could be worth a punt if they're going to play. I personally like the look of Holobas. He had 8 assists last season and he can get clean sheets, but the only trouble is he likes yellow cards. Second to last, we have West Ham. They have made the signings of Fornells and Haller, two very good options and promising signings, but they have actually lost a few squad players in Nasri, Andy Carroll, Anoutovic, Obiang and Adrian. But even though they've lost these players, I think they've actually improved with their signings as they now have a great attack of Haller, Fornells, Anderson and Lanzini. In their pre-season, Lanzini and Haller were rather impressive, making all West Ham forwards looking very good for the price. As their games get really good after Man City from game week 2, the attacking outlets are all very good priced if they can glue together and get a good few returns so would be good to look out for. Their defence still has some contention and with Fabianski having a knock, you might want to avoid their defence for now. And lastly, it's Wolves. They have made two of their loans permanent in Jimenez and Dendonka joining, as well as another striker in Catrone coming in, and some more defensive depth in Vallejo on loan. Their only outs have been loans, so they have managed to get that much needed depth in their team. Their pre-season has been two friendlies and two Champions League qualifying games, and they have done very well also scoring quite a few. The likes of Jimenez and Jota have been in good form, but now with Catrone they might be in risk of rotation, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. All Wolves assets are pretty good, as they are still pretty cheap, and they don't have amazing squad depth, so most of their players will be playing a lot, but this could also hinder their performances, but we'll have to wait and see, as they do have a difficult start. So there we have it. That is a nice summary of all the team's pre-seasons and some players you should look out for. Again, I want to say a great, great big thank you to everyone for the support this pre-season. I didn't expect it to go like this, but I am very happy, and I will take this opportunity when I can. I'm taking your comments on board, trying not to be too funny but also focusing on the important parts. There will also be a link for all my preseason videos before the first game week such as 0% selected team, wildcard strategy and transfer pairs. And I will be showing you my game week 1 team on Thursday before the first game week of the season. So be sure to join my league. Thank you and remember. <laughs> Don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>